Hi, I'm Doug. I'm a pediatrician and I take care of sick babies. Being born is a dangerous event, maybe the most dangerous minutes of our lives. Over 5% of babies born worldwide will need help just to start breathing after birth. This is a huge global problem. My thesis is a simple idea that should make being born a lot safer. This is Emma. This photograph was taken 30 seconds after Emma was born. That's me at the top of the picture. I'm trying to help Emma breathe. Now currently, all international guidelines state that if Emma isn't breathing after birth, what I'm supposed to do is cut her umbilical cord and take her to a warming bed where I help her breathe by pushing air into her lungs. Ideally, this takes one minute. But in Emma's case, it took me four minutes to get her lungs working properly. So that means my first step was to cut Emma's umbilical cord and separate Emma from her mother and the life-sustaining placenta that had been providing Emma oxygen for the last nine months. Immediately after birth, the placenta is still available to provide Emma oxygen, and one minute at a minimum is way too long to ask a baby to hold her breath. So now I'm going to ask you to hold your breath while I tell you how big of a problem this truly is. So on the count of three, please hold your breath. One, two, three, go. There are over 300,000 babies born every day worldwide, which means that every day more than 17,000 babies will need help breathing after birth. That's more than 36 babies every three minutes. Now failing to breathe after birth will kill over 800,000 babies every year. That's more than four babies dying every three minutes. Most of the babies that die are born in poor countries, and most of those babies are born at full term and are otherwise completely healthy. They just need some help. This is a huge problem, but there is hope. Okay, you can breathe again. Thank you for doing that. That was about 40 seconds, and it's really hard to concentrate on what I'm saying while you're holding your breath, right? Well, what if you were connected to a device that provided you oxygen while you weren't breathing? Better yet, what if Emma was still connected to her mother and her placenta, and she was still receiving oxygen while I was trying to help her breathe? So instead of cutting the umbilical cord and taking Emma to the warming bed, I brought the things I needed to help Emma to her. This idea is called baby-directed umbilical cord clamping. It's free, it's simple, and it takes advantage of the most important resources we may have for helping babies breathe, their mothers and their placentas. And these resources are available everywhere, even in the poorest countries where they're needed the most. Last year, I used an animal model to show that this was a better approach in newborn lambs. This year, I'm running a randomized control trial, enrolling our sickest babies who need help breathing after birth right here in Melbourne. And if I can show that it's better to help babies breathe while they're still connected to their mothers and their placentas and still receiving oxygen, I may be able to change international guidelines and save the lives of thousands of babies who die needlessly worldwide. Thank you.